Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to make this beautiful dress. It is the McCall's 7281. Uh, so I have basically done this option here but without the underskirt. And I did it in a solid quilting cotton. So if you would like to see how I make this, please stay tuned. Alright guys, so I am starting with the shoulder straps. Um, so I'm using a quilt quilting cotton in the I think it's green apple I think it's called from spotlight um, now all sewing patterns come with a one and a half centimeter seam allowance or five eighths of an inch if you wanted thicker straps though you would just sew less of a seam allowance so I'm gonna sew them both and instead of pulling it out and cutting it I'm just gonna continue straight on to the next one so we're folding in half long ways to look like a hot dog. I saw that analogy and I was like, I love it. So we're going to stitch all the way across. Now we don't need to seal the ends because they will, they're going to be in the dress. So we just needed to do the two straps. Uh, I'm going to set them aside now that they've sewn. I'll have to turn them inside out in a minute, but I'll do that soon. So now I'm going to take my centerpieces. So I trace all my um, patterns onto trace and toil and then all the information I need. So you should have two of all the top pieces or four. So double the amount because uh, you need a lining. You don't have to use the same fabric for the lining, uh, but I am because I had enough from what I bought so this is the side front so there should be a center front a side front and then a back piece for the top of this and then your straps so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take one of my center fronts and open it out because i cut it on the fold and then i'm going to take one of my side fronts and put right sides together and then stitch down there now you can pin this if you want to I'm actually holding it and twisting it as I go so I want to make sure that the ends are going to match up and then I'm just twisting it so that we got the nice curve there um, so with the right side facing up I'm going to take the other side as well uh, making sure that I'm putting the right sides together now mine Quilting cotton doesn't really have a right and a wrong side, so I'm not too phased about this. Uh, if it was a print, you'd be putting your print sides together. So again, we're going to come in, back stitch. We always back stitch with everything that we make, and then I'm just going to match up the bottom again, and then this should all just fall into place now again if you're in a beginner sewer feel free to pin that um, but so that's now technically the top outside done so I'm gonna do the lining which is the same thing again because I want patterns usually tell you do all the outside then all the lining but I'm already here so I may as well just do it now And then match up the bottoms so if you don't match up the bottom now you might over pull and then your um, bodice won't be even so I do half the curve and then match the bottom and fit the rest of the fabric in now if you've done accurate cutting it should all fit anyway uh, but this is just how I do it so I don't have to pin so I do save myself a lot of time by not having to pin um, but that has come with a lot of practice. So if you're just starting out making dresses, please pin it. Alrighty. So now I've got two bodice tops. So we're going to take our, what else have I got here? Here we go, the back pieces. So again, we should have four of those, two outside and two lining. Um, when I don't have enough fabric for a lining, I will just take, when I'm using sateen specifically, I've got um, like a peachy coloured sateen fabric 
that I just automatically bought as a lining fabric. So I've never really made anything out of it. I've just got it there for when I need linings. So again, so I've got this one right sides up and then I'm going to attach the side back at the side. Making sure that it all lines up. And then I'm going to take the other one and do the same thing. So we've got two for each side, but I'm going to chain sew them because it saves time and fabric. Oh, thread, not fabric. No, I'm sewing that wrong. I've just grabbed that the wrong way. Hold that thought. So if you've got a print, that's obviously going to help. Um, these go long ways like this, not short ways. All right. And then matching up the bottom seam. And then we take this other one. So again, I'm going to sit it right sides up, grab my side and stick that right sides together. And I'm going to flip it over so that I've got the bulk of my thing not like facing outside of my machine. I don't want the bulk in here, uh, especially on a domestic machine. There's just not enough space. So line that up, back stitch it in. And then again, we're going to hold the bottom. If you're not pinning it, hold it even and stitch down. So we've got one more piece because I've got a lining and an outside. You should also make sure that you cut all of your pattern pieces on the right grain. If you cut them on the wrong grain, you can very easily stretch them out of shape and then you won't have as nice of a fabric. So those markings are on there for a reason. Okay, so now we've got our front, or our whole top, and a lining. So I'm just going to turn these in the right way. Uh, there's no real easy way to do this. I just stick my finger in and push some of it through like this, and then I pinch it and roll it usually like that. Although this fabric doesn't really want to do that. Uh, it works a lot better with sateen. So you just roll your finger and pull it through. So I'm just going to pause the video and do that off camera. So they're turned inside out. I'm just waiting for the iron to heat up. But what I am going to come and do is along these curves, I'm going to take my pinking shears or zigzag scissors as I like to call them and just trim down the fabric along the curves like this. So that's going to allow it to sit nice and flat. If you don't have pinking shears, you can just take snips and do little cuts uh, to help it flex because then it's going to be a smoother curve when you're wearing it. Alrighty, so I have ironed them so that that seam is in the center and it's going to be underneath. Um, so to help with like future ironing issues, I'm going to stitch about an eighth of an edge from the eighth of an inch from this edge. So on my foot. Um, and so that what that's going to do is it's going to hold it in that position. So then I'm just going to come across to the other side and do the same thing. Now this would look really cute in a contrasting thread if I had a colour I'd like to contrast it with. So probably with this green I'd do a white. So I'm just going to do that to both of them. Wrong, honey bear? Sorry, my child's just home today, aren't you? What can I get for you? <laughs> <laughs> you 
You just want to be seen, do you? Can you see yourself on the screen? How very cool. All right, let me turn it off and come play with you for a while. Yeah, okay. All righty. Sorry about that. So now I'm going to take one of my um, top bodice pieces. Doesn't matter if it's the inside or it. Oh, no, it does matter. I'm going to make this one the outside. Both of mine are identical. So on my back piece, I marked where the strap needs to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that on top and then pin the strap to my piece right in line with the markings. Um, I'm going to use clips because my pins are somewhere else. But the effect is the same. So I'm going to do that to both of my straps. So I'm going to flip the pattern over and then line it up. And then sit that where it needs to sit, like so. And then clip that in place. Like that. So then I'm going to take my bodice lining I guess and line them up with the right sides together so the name of the game is to line up all of your seams and I also want to do I want to make sure that my seam one's going one way and the other one's going the other so what that's going to do is make a really flat seam when we're sewing um, again you should probably use pins I should probably get up and grab pins um, but because of my bag making, I have the clips near me, not the pins. So I, what I've done is I've done the two ends, and now I'm just going to join that to there, like so. And then put probably just one more clip there to hold that in place. Now, the other part of the straps go from the, the middle seam out. So I want to make sure that I'm not going to sew that part. So I don't want to sew from here to here because I need to be able to put that strap in. So I'm just going to put a clip there and then on this side. So then I can match up all of these centered seams like, whoops, like so. And I'm again making sure that these are going in opposite directions so it's going to sit nice and flat. And then I'm going to leave another gap here for the other one. Um, so if you're using lots of pins, this will be a lot easier to see. To leave the gap, obviously. And I'm going to match up the end. Now this is how I would do it even off camera, except I'd probably go and find my pins. The only reason I'm not is because I literally have no idea where they are at the moment. So again, clip that in. I'm going to leave. Oh no. Alright. So now that's all clipped. I'm going to start at one of the ends. It doesn't really matter which one. Make sure everything's lined up. And then using the seam allowance, I'm going to stitch along. I'm just going to pull the clips off as I go. Now, this is where, here is where the strap needs to go. So I'm going to get to this pin or clip and then just stop and back stitch, pull it out, and then come and start back up at that seam point. I'm going to come down to a nice point and then with my needle down I'm going to pivot and go back up to that seam point and back stitch and then leave a gap for my strap, back stitch and continue on. You also want to make sure that you don't accidentally stitch the strap into more of the seam than is necessary. Yeah. 
Okay, so now when we turn it inside out, we should have straps and then some gaps. Now for me, my straps, I'm not a standard size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my clothes off, off camera, obviously, because that's weird. Um, I'm going to put it up against myself, crisscross the straps over at the back and put them into the gaps um, and make sure that they are the right length for me. So hold on, let me turn this up. All right, so what I will do is I will take off this because this will change it and I'm going to lean it up against me and then grab the strap and crisscross it over and then put in as much as I need to into that hole and then pin it there so that it all fits lovely. So first I'm going to like roll out all of these seams. Uh, so I'm going to go do that to make sure that it's going to fit perfectly. So as you can see, I'm going to have to put in a little bit more than the standard because I must have a shorter torso. Um, but that's how you're going to fit it to you. So I just need to make sure that all the seams are lined up everywhere and crisscross those two straps over, put them where they need to go, and then we'll continue on. Okay? Okay, so I have done that. Uh, so I have clipped them from the outside because I had it on. So now all I need to do is reach into here and then unclip them as I'm pinching it, turn it inside out, and then stitch the gap closed. So we just need to make sure that the strap is up against that seam. So as you can see, there's quite a lot that I had to tuck under, um, but that's okay. I would prefer to do it now than have to unpick it later and I can just trim that off. And because I've lined it all up with everything, it also means that it is now custom fit to me Everything's lining up beautifully, which is going to make for a beautiful dress. All right. So just back stitch, stitch it in, back stitch some more, and then I'm going to chop off that excess because I don't need it in there. I am confident that my top now fits me. So then when we come over, we'll have these beautiful crisscross straps. Um, obviously, when doing that, make sure that you don't twist them. So now I'm going to do what's called understitching. So if you've never sewn a garment before, understitching is very important and basically helps with ironing, in my opinion. So what you want to do is you want to go to the wrong side. So for me, the way I can tell which side is the wrong side is it's the side where my seam is on my straps so I'm going to have the seam allowance tucked towards the wrong side and I'm just going to stitch like an eighth of an inch from the seam making sure that I'm tacking down all of the seam allowance underneath so I'm stretching this a little bit out this way to make sure that I'm not making any tucks or folds or anything bad. Now this is where that, um, the V, I'm down to the V. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to take my snips and just snip the fabric at the V. What that's going to do is allow it to flex better, so we're going to get a nicer point. So I've just done a single snip. And again, I'm using my fingers to make sure that that seam allowance is definitely on this side. So I can feel it there. If you're worried, you could definitely pin this. Just cut off all my threads from my other bit. So now from the outside, you don't see that stitching. 
but it is there so it holds everything so from the outside it's smooth and then from the back you've just got a line of stitching so that is now the bodice completely done uh, so I'm gonna get, move on to the skirt so as you saw by the start of this video I altered the skirt a little bit uh, so well completely actually so I'm doing a circle skirt so I just took that from another pattern that I had it was actually a different brand in anything but that doesn't really matter because my waist is the same size so so long as I'm making the skirt fit me you can actually play Frankenstein with your patterns and change them all around so now I'm going to take the skirt so I should have one half circle and then two quarter circle pieces um, so I'm just going to sew the quarter circles to the half circle. I'm just going to line it up as I go. Again, feel free to pin this. I'm just not much of a pinner unless I absolutely have to. Because I've had practice. Now, I've cut this a little bit crooked. So my piece is actually a little bit bigger but that's okay I'm not super worried about that either that's my bodice move that over there so after I've attached these pieces I'm actually going to go over and overlock them um just not the bodice the bodice actually doesn't need overlocking for how I'm going to do it but I am going to overlock the skirt uh, if you don't have an overlocker, that's okay. Zigzag along the edges or use pinking shears. The overlocker is just going to help prevent fraying. Um, which is something I definitely would like to do. I've cut this very, very crooked, so I'm just going to straighten it up as I go. All right. So I'm just going to go over to the overlocker. So this is my overlocker. I, it's probably going to be a bit vibrating because you're sitting on the overlocker table. And again, I don't have a servo motor on all my machines. So I'm just going to overlock the edge. shades of green in my overlocker I didn't have enough for all of them so I've just done a few so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna overlock the two seams I just did and the reason I've got my hand here oh the reason I've got my hand here is to make sure that nothing's folding up underneath it as I'm trimming it down and overlocking it so then I'm going to do the two raw edges that I've got um, because I have to put a zip in here and I don't want it to fray around the zip. I'm just going to go the whole way down. And I'm going to do the other side as well. And then I'm going to overlock the whole bottom. Now normally where you're sitting is where I would be putting all of the excess. Currently I'm leaning it on my leg. Uh, so where possible, try and put the bulk on the table beside you. So I'm not trying to trim anything off with the overlocker, I'm just sealing that edge. Because eventually I'm going to turn it up for the hand. Um, if you don't have an overlocker, you can also do a roll hem. Looks really nice on a circle skirt. As you saw, because I cut them crooked, I'm coming, honey. Because I cut them crooked, I just veed that off so now it's nice and smooth. So we'll go back to the sewing machine after I've gone and played with my child. <laughs> 
Alright, attaching the bodice to the skirt is now what we are up to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out which piece is my front, which is obviously without all the stitching. So this piece here is my front. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this front and going to attach it to the skirt. So I'm going to go all the way to the edge here. I found my pins, by the way. Um, so if you've got an extra $3, go to Spotlight and get yourself a magnetic pin cushion. They are amazing. And then we're going to match up that seam there. So again, we want to do it in the opposite way, but you need to make sure that your bodice one is going in the same direction and then make the skirt go the other way. Otherwise, it's going to have a twist in it and that's going to suck. It, you're going to feel it on your waist. And I'm going to put two pins there to hold that in place. And then I might just stick one in the middle here. Actually, no, I probably won't even do that. Alright, so then we're going to come across to my other side seam and I'm going to again match that seam up and pin it so it's going in again the correct direction to the bodice. So this is why we've got the bodice piece on top so that we can check that all of our seams are going to sit nice and flat inside. It's not the be all and end all if you stuff that bit up but it is a lot more helpful to you and it's going to sit and feel a lot nicer if you do do it that way. Okay, so now I'm just going to chuck a couple of pins in here. And this is mainly to make sure that, again, this seam is going to sit in the right direction. Uh, feel free to pin all the way along if you want to. Uh, if you're a beginner, definitely pin all the way along. Otherwise, you might have a few kind of issues. But that means that now when I sew this, all of my seams are going to match up beautifully and it's going to look like a bought one. Alright, so I'm going to have bodice side up. I'm going to backstitch at the start because I always backstitch. And then I'm just going to stitch across. Now, because this is a circle going to a straight, it is a bit difficult. Also, if you put your pins in this way, you can drive over them. Lots of people don't know that, and they always pin like long ways. I see a lot of YouTube videos where people pin long ways. Don't do it, it's a trap. Unless you want to make sure that you stop there. In which case, a pin that way would indicate like stop and don't sew here, which could be quite helpful for this. Well, we were I should have probably taught you that technique when we were putting our straps on, but anyway, too late now. All right, and I've backstitched at the end. I'm going to chop off that excess there. So now, before we go any further, we open it up and we check. So I haven't missed anywhere, but I've got some threads hanging out. We don't want that. So now, all of your seams should match up. So when you've got the dress on, it all matches up beautifully. Again, overlocking thread, snip it off. Alright, so now that's all done. Now to hide this back seam, a lot of people just overlock this and tuck it, or you can do a whole bunch of things, but we're going to do something extra fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay the dress so it's right sides up and I'm going to take the skirt and roll it into like a sausage and then stick it on the bodice and then I'm going to pull the back of the bodice over so we're going to make like a weird long sausage roll. So now what you want to do is with the skirt on the inside we're going to stitch this right sides together. Now this might seem like a crazy notion, but just go with me on this. Okay, so again, we're going to pin there. I'm actually probably going to chuck in a few extra pins for this. Now, again, we want to make sure that this is going in the right direction, which should be opposite to the other one if we did opposite the first time around.
I might actually stick a couple of pins just in here. Now I know this seems like a crazy notion, but this is actually how they do shirts, like Western shirts, and I've just adapted it for sewing dresses because it works. And if it works, you go with it. So I'm just also making sure that I'm tucking that skirt down so I'm not going to accidentally get it in this seam because it's important that we don't stitch it. Now as you can see I am putting like a lot more pins in this side because I want to make sure it's going to not catch. Clearly my child doesn't want me to make this video today. I can hear him being very destructive. But I am determined this is going to happen. Alright, so again, ow, don't grab the pins, that's silly. And this is part of the skirt, it doesn't matter that it's leaking out the side, ignore that, that's fine. So then we're going to match up this end. Like so. That way. Pinning, pinning, lots and lots of pinning. Okay, so now we've got this nice long sausage. So now we're going to stitch like one stitch length towards the bulk. So you don't want to go like a lot, we're literally doing one stitch length next to the last lot of stitch lengths. And the reason for this is because this is going to conceal everything for you. You'll also notice I'll be sewing this a lot slower. It is a lot trickier because of the giant sausage. But worth it. Because this is going to give us a really flat waist. There we go. I'll be right back. So now the fun part. We're going to grab this and we're just going to pull it out of the sausage. It's so basically going to turn the sausage inside out. So effectively now what we've done is we have hidden all of our seams inside. See, it just pops out. So that's the front and then that's the back. So there is no seam. That you can see you can't see any raw edges along that waistband the only raw the only reason i can tell it's the back is because i've got the overlocking and the top under stitching along the top sorry not the top stitching top stitching goes through both so i'm just that is now ready for a zip so i'm actually going to go back to the overlocker and just overlock this raw edge as well um on both ends so i'm going to seal up that pocket so if there's any in uh changes that you need to make now's the time to do it and then we're just going to overlock down there and install our zip all right so i know there's no time lapse between this and the rest of the video but i had to run down and grab a green zip uh because i didn't have one so i have changed over my foot to my invisible zipper foot and now we're going to install the zipper so I'm going to put the dress right sides up and then I'm going to hold the zip and this is how I teach it in my classes. So I'm going to hold the zip right sides up. So this is the way I want them both to end up. Then I'm going to unzip the zip and then I'm going to flip it up and over. Uh, make sure that you don't tuck it under because that's how you end up with twists and kinks in your zips. So I'm going to put the little stopper of the zipper is there. So I'm going to put my needle down and I'm going to backstitch a few 
And then I'm just going to make sure that my zip is in line with the edge of my overlocking and stitch along. Now because this zip, this zipper foot is amazing, so it pushes the teeth over out of the way without me having to do much. Uh, it was only a couple of dollars on eBay. So if you have an industrial machine, definitely get yourself the invisible zipper foot. Um, you can also get them for domestics, but with the domestics, you just have to use this finger to further roll out the teeth so that you don't stitch on them. Uh, totally worth it. And so then I'm going to stop about a finger's worth before, so I unzip the zip all the way, and then I'm, you can't see, I know. And then I've just stopped a finger's worth before the end of the zip so that I don't run into that. So now you just want to make sure that you haven't stitched any teeth so you zip it back up. Um, if it doesn't zip up, you've obviously stitched over the teeth so you have to unpick it. Uh, but again, this foot is really, really good and I've never had an issue. So, a couple of things we're going to do now. First thing, I'm going to take my uh, friction texture and I'm just going to, where this seam comes out, I'm going to draw on my zip. Because it's important that that bit lines up. If that doesn't line up, your back is going to be off. So that's the easiest way to line it up, is just put like a little tag. Then I'm going to bring the dress around, right sides out, as if I was wearing it, basically. So that the right side is up. Oh, I've got another thread. Always clip your threads as you go. So again, I've got the zip up, I'm going to hold it where I want it to be, like that, and then I'm going to unzip it. And then I'm going to flip this up and over. So again, because this foot is awesome, I can start at the top of the dress both times because it's got the two channels. So now I just want to put this on, and my mark that I've put on my zip, I want it to line up with that bodice seam. So, so long as everything's gone to plan and you've done all your seaming correctly, it should all line up wonderfully. I accidentally just undid my zip, oh not my zip, my thread, because I didn't have enough of a tail, that was my fault. Okay, so, back stitch, and then forward stitch. And the reason I do it that way is because sometimes it's quite difficult to sew over the little zipper end. So if I back stitch first, it's kind of given me more ground to start with. So again, I'm making sure that that is lined up there. And then I'm just going to hold it on and sew down. And my child would like to watch a lot of stuff. So I'm going to do this and then hit pause again. Okay, I will come and put Love Monster on. Alright, so that, again, should now be, once you zip that up, that should sit perfectly. Yep. So again, make sure you zip it up. And my seam lines up beautifully. And my zip goes up. So now we just got the bottom, top, and hemming. So give me a minute. Alright. So change my zipper, uh, my zipper foot out and put my normal foot back in. And so now I'm going to turn the dress back inside out. Now that I know that my zip works, I can leave it done up or open. It currently doesn't matter. And again, I need to trim off all of my overlocking. The snips that were at the overlocker are a little bit more blunt than these ones. So now I want to line up the bottom of my dress and I'm actually going to sew from the bottom up to the zip. So I'm just going to do a couple of back stitches and then line it all up. And the name of the game is this should all be perfectly beautifully even because you cut it beautifully. So I'm going to sew up to and I just want to come up to the stitches that I already did, and then I'm going to sew over the zip. Back stitch, and done. So now I can cut that end off. You don't have to cut it off if you don't want to, um, but I will. So now, the zip is 
in the seam and you can barely see it. And now also the bottom of our dress is completely enclosed. So I'm going to start at a seam and I'm just going to turn it up a little bit and now I'm going to stitch the seam shut. Uh, not shut, up. So you've got to remember this is a curve. So again, you can pin this if you want to. Um, the, the more you turn up, the harder you're going to find this because you're trying to put a larger circle on a smaller one because it's forever getting bigger. But the quilting cotton is quite forgiving. So... So there's a couple of ways you could have ended this. I have overlocked it and turned it up. You could also use a roll hem foot if you've got one. Um, you could put binding on it. You could... You could do a lot of things, really. You could put a cuff. It's like a whole extra giant piece. So I'm just doing little bits at a time to try and get it as even as I can. And again, don't stitch faster than you need to. Like I could quite easily sew it slower. It's just I've done so many circle skirts. Most of my dresses have circle skirts on them and then I've made a whole bunch of just circle skirts. So I have played this game a lot. What I am conscious of though is running out of bobbin thread because that would suck. So every time I'm stopping I'm also just checking to make sure it is actually stitched down to make sure that I haven't run out of bobbin thread. I mean a wonderful bobbin but you just never know. Okay so I'm up to a seam which means I am either half or a quarter of the way through. Oh no I've done a couple of things. We should be nearly done. Yes, Jesse. What's up? What's up? You can play with that. You just want to put your hand in the video? Okay. No need to be crazy. Don't put your oi. You gotta watch your hands, don't put them too close to here. I'm so glad that doesn't change you. You just wanna be in the video too, huh? No, oh, don't shove that down there. No. You know better than that. Don't you? My child usually sits on my lap to sew. Don't you, buddy? You like to help? Alright, I'm nearly back to the start, actually. That went a lot quicker than I thought it would. I really am loving this motor. Then when we get back to here, you just want to try and stitch over the same few stitches. Uh, especially if you've used a contrasting thread colour. Okay, so now, technically, the dress is currently wearable, but what we want to do is we just want to come up to where the zip is because we've still got these bits sticking out. So we need to deal with those now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the zip completely out and tuck that over, and then I'm just going to tack those so that from the outside you're not going to see it uh, but it's not going to stick up anymore so we're just going to fold it over that seam allowance that we've got and then just stitch it down with a couple of stitches uh, you can hand stitch this if you want to but i i hate hand stitching so i'm not also if you wanted to you could put um, some hook and eyes on this you would just not have to do this step because you would have left a gap um, but I can't do up hook and eyes from behind by myself, and I like to be able to dress myself, so that's why we're not doing that. 
So again, same with this one. Pull it all the way out, tuck it over, and we're just going to stitch it with a couple of like tacking stitches, which is just back and forth repeatedly. So just a little bit like that. And again, you're not going to see this from the outside, so it doesn't matter if it looks a little bit messy. And there you have it. One complete dress. Now I'm going to go put it on and show you guys.